Smog, a combination of nitrogen and sulfur oxides, ozone, and atmospheric aerosol, very common in big cities and caused by combustion emissions and photochemical reactions. But what does the EGR in your car have to do with all this? And why is this system so hated? Join us to find out with a real example of a Saab 93. The engine gas recirculation valve was a system invented to reduce the amount of pollutants that cars emitted. Basically, nitrogen oxides, particulate, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. The system works by allowing part of the exhaust fumes, shown in red, to enter back into the engine to be reburned. This reduces the amount of oxygen in the combustion chamber, so there's less fuel, the combustion temperature is lower, and the emissions, especially nitrogen oxides, are also reduced. In the combustion, not all the fuel is oxidized to CO2 and water, but some hydrocarbons remain, and some others are formed, especially the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. The engine oil retains most of these compounds, but some are still present in the exhaust fumes, as you can see in these chromatograms. And I'm telling you all this because the presence of these polycyclic aromatic compounds in the exhaust fumes is key to understand the formation of the photochemical smog that is so common in our cities. Nitrogen oxides and carbon monoxide are also important in the formation of this smog. With the help of the sun, these nitrogen oxides can react with oxygen to produce ozone. With a series of free radical reactions, the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons consume these nitrogen oxides and this results in an accumulation of tropospheric ozone. The presence of ozone is a clear indicator that the photochemical smog is being formed. During the summers, normally the presence of ozone, which is very irritant, gets intensified because the radiation is stronger. Nitrogen and sulfur oxides can also react with water to form nitric and sulfuric acid. We will now see a real example of how an EGR valve works in a Saab 93 and the problems that may arise. The Saab has a mechanical engine gas recirculation valve which uses vacuum from this pump which also operates the servo brake. Underneath here there's a silicon line that goes to the different uh, electronic solenoids that operate the vacuum system. One of these solenoids operates the EGR valve. When low engine load is required, the EGR valve is open and thus reducing the emissions. And where more power is required, the EGR valve closes, allowing only fresh air to enter the combustion chamber. This is the turbo. It's basically a compressor that works with the exhaust fumes. This is the exhaust pipe uh, after exiting the turbo. This is the vacuum solenoid that operates the turbo. This is the electronic solenoid that is operated with this vacuum pump. Let's now go to the other side and here we can see the air filter. The fresh air gets straight into the turbo, it gets compressed. Now it needs to cool down if the engine has an intercooler. And it comes back up here into the inlet manifold. This is where the fresh air mixes with the exhaust fumes and gets into the combustion chamber. The EGR has a main drawback, which is the formation of soot, that can end up clogging the inlet manifold, increasing the fuel consumption and reducing the performance. This problem intensifies when the engine is a bit old, because it may start burning a bit of oil, and then obviously this burnt oil is pumped back into the combustion chamber, and it just makes a mess. This is why a lot of people get the EGR valve cut off. In this sub, the procedure might seem pretty straightforward because it's a mechanical pump, but in fact it's not. This car is cleverer than you might think. If you just disconnect the vacuum line, this is what happens. The check engine light shows up, which limits the engine performance. You see, this engine tests the EGR valve every time the engine is decelerating. To do so, it uses the MAF and MAP sensors. This is the manifold absolute pressure sensor. And this is the mass airflow sensor. When the engine is decelerating, the pistons generate high vacuum in the intake manifold, which is detected by the MAP. The EGR was closed because we were previously accelerating, let's say, to escape from police. But oh, traffic light is red, so safety first. 
Now the engine load is low, so the powertrain control module opens the EGR. You see the control module is expecting the manifold absolute pressure to increase because now we're sending exhaust gases into the combustion chamber. But remember the EGR valve is not operating anymore because we cut it off. So then we have the check engine. In fact, the only way I'm aware you can cut off the EGR valve in this car is by remapping the ECU. If the EGR valve is dirty and doesn't seal well, the check engine light will probably pop up. The fault code B0400 is related to an EGR flow malfunction. This problem is normally solved by cleaning the EGR. Just remove these two bolts. It's also a good idea to check the vacuum pipes to see if there is any leak. The EGR valve just comes right off. A spring keeps the EGR valve normally closed. So give the valve and the seal a good cleanup to make sure they seal well. Wow, the magic of editing! Nice and shiny. Hopefully now the exhaust fumes won't come into the inlet manifold when they're not supposed to. Oh, and make sure you don't lose this seal. And now just mount it back. It's pretty straightforward. You will notice the valve has some recoil and that's because it's normally closed. And finally just put the bolts back on. And the job is hopefully done. Just keep an eye when decelerating to see if the check engine shows up again. And finally, just clear the DTCs. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.